Hello everyone, this is Mrinal. In this video, we are going to look into the flow of execution in a function call. That is, by the end of this video, you will be aware of how a function that is being called in a Python program gets executed, what is the memory layout and everything, right? So, let's get started. So, first we have to understand the memory layout of a program. So now by memory layout of a program, we mean that how a program is being organized into your memory. That means your RAM. So if we look at uh, in a particular structure, which is uh, given in the, in the web page, right? So if we look into it, so the very bottom, we have the operating system. So whatever operating system you're running, Windows 7, Windows 10, you know, Linux, Unix, whatever. So that operating systems uh, code that are being used as of now, for your execution will be loaded into the lower part right and after that this is the part where the source code is stored now what do i mean by source code so imagine if i write a very simple python program right and it is uh, maybe um, hello dot py right so it's a very simple uh, program uh, that um, takes your name right uh, it will take your name and it will just print hello comma a right so it will just print uh, hello your name so this particular source code that is the program will be stored in here the next part is for the uh, global variables that is a static or global variable so uh, this part will be global variables so imagine if your program has certain variables declared in here like a now a is a global variable why because it is visible throughout this hello.py program now if we have some sort of a function because now we have discussed about function earlier now function can have variables declared inside which are called local variables so in that scenario those will not be stored only the global ones that are visible throughout the program will be stored here so a will be stored in here after that you have something called as a stack now uh, this is the part where function uh, gets stored right your functions and uh, different kind of function calls and everything uh, regarding the function the parameters in the local variable everything will be stored in the stack and this is your heap heap memory where the objects now we know that uh, python is an object oriented programming and everything starting from a smallest number uh, to you know list dictionaries whatever everything is an object and they are stored in the heap memory now again uh, this particular diagram that we have shown over here uh, again it is uh, you know compiler and implementation dependent so the, in whatever format the compiler is designed or the architecture of computer it can change so it is just a general idea so uh, we don't have to stick to it uh, each and every time but it is the general idea that on the very bottom we have our operating system then our source code that is the actual program then the global variables that means those variables which are visible throughout your program then there is a space for stack again it is nothing but a memory space where your functions uh, can actually be stored and then we have heap where your objects are actually stored right so this is the memory layout now we have to be familiar with this idea of a stack and in our program uh, we'll just look into it right now let us jump into pythertutor.com uh, now this is a very nice site uh, because uh, the moment you write a code it gives you an opportunity to visualize your execution that how a particular uh, function or any particular piece of code is being visualized so let us write our simple program add to numbers at this point we have finished writing our uh, addition program which is very simple only two lines of code now as we know we have to call the function in order to get it executed so we'll call uh, ad and we'll just pass two arguments to it now as the function is returning so it has to be stored somewhere so suppose val is a variable where we are going to store the result of the add function right and finally we'll print it so we'll write print well something of that sort right so this is our very simple program now let us uh, visualize it now i think it is uh, visible visible enough uh, for us to discuss so here the program is written so we are at the very first line right so now uh, this is our memory layout kind of a thing so frame is again the stack now if we move the stack and uh, make it as a memory of its own right this part uh, this particular stack has been moved over here for the sake of convenience right so in stack whenever a function is being called uh, in our case it is uh, 
add function right a stack frame something called as a stack frame gets created now stack frame is nothing but a memory block where all the information about your function will be stored uh, it can be the list of parameters right uh, parameters or uh, one then parameter to something of this sort then the return address return address basically means where my function is going to return the value so in here we can see the return address is the val is the function after evaluating the result will return the value to the val right and then now uh, we can have some local variables now local variables in this function is a and b a and b are local variables so we will just add them and return it okay so it can be a local variable and then after uh, this particular thing has been executed the entire stack frame gets uh, destroyed so we'll look into the idea once again so we'll, let us uh, visualize the code so we are on the first line we'll press next so in here we can see a go global frame gets created right so that means a frame has been created and the function is ad comma ab right so as we can see the function was here but we directly jumped into the fourth line starting from the first line we jumped into the fourth line why because it is a function definition and we know that unless and until the function is called it never gets executed as simple as that so on the fourth line we see val uh, ad10 so we'll just press next in here now uh, the arguments here we have written right the parameters i'll just change the color to something else so these parameters that we have right in this case the parameters are 10 and 20 the parameters get stored 10 and 20 the order is not that much relevant in here uh, so 10 and 20 uh, get stored in my stack frame right uh, so after that let us press next then as the function is being encountered in the fourth line that is 80 8 10 20 now our program will try and find where is this ad function and it will simply jump over here and it finds okay this is the function uh, which has the same name ad and has two arguments uh, and the values are 10 and 20 so it will go inside and it will jump over to the return statement return that is the next statement that it execute uh, or finds so return a plus b so now after that on the second line it tries to perform the operation that is a plus b now value of a is 10 b is 20 so it adds both of them and evaluates the value of 30 so here the value gets stored and after that as this is the end of the statement so it will jump over to its return address so what is the return address val so we'll jump over here so here the val has actually been updated to 30 right because val was the variable that was supposed to be stored so here the value gets stored and this function it's uh, an object that means it gets stored in the heap itself right so again remember um, all kinds of objects are actually stored in the heap heap is a kind of a dynamic memory whereas a stack is a kind of a fixed memory right so after that this statement has been evaluated we'll uh, go to the fifth line and we'll execute it now after execution of the fifth line we find that our output is 30 right so this is the basic idea about function execution right so how the function actually execute so here we have shown a crude diagram of how the memory is being organized how a program is being stored in our primary memory and here we have seen how the actually python uses this memory layout uh, to perform different kind of an operation the main thing that we have to remember is again unless and until a function is being called its definition doesn't get executed only when the function gets called its definition is being found in the program either it is already there if you have declared it or it is there in some other modules or in the standard library so it will find that particular definition then feed in the arguments and then perform the operation and then return the value to wherever it wants right and finally the operation gets done so this is the basic idea behind flow of execution right so now uh, let us jump over to our blog post now the same thing is written in the blog post itself uh, so I'll go through the blog post and i guess it will make sense the same example is taken in here the only thing is that we have just uh, called the function inside the print function that is also doable and in the uh, visualization exp uh, example we have just stored it in a value there is nothing wrong in it both of them will behave in a similar way now the point to remember is of importance 
that uh, the execution of a program always starts from the first to the last line right it will go from top to bottom there is no other layout and again function definition never changes the flow of execution though it seems that it is jumping that okay it is not following the linear pattern but it is not like that as it encounters as your interpreter encounters the def keyword it understands that okay it's a function definition and i don't have to actually execute it unless and until it is called so it simply jumps over it Another important thing is that function can be called from inside a function. The similar example was given in here. Now print is a function that is present by default in your Python interpreter and add function is a user defined function. We'll talk about the types of function later on. So add is a user defined function that we have actually written, right? We are calling add function inside of print function. So that is what it says that a function can be called inside of another function. Another important thing is that a function can also be declared inside of another function. That is, if I have a simple function, maybe arithmetic, right, which takes number, and I can have different kind of function inside of that function, like add, subtract, multiplication, something of that sort will also work. So let me just demonstrate it. If I write something of this sort, and I take two variables, a comma b, right, and I write another function, def add, and in here, I can just simply write return a plus b. And we can just simply call this function. Let's see how it happens. So I can just call func func. And I can just provide some values to it. We'll close it. We'll store it in something. And we'll print it. And another important thing is that, uh, that don't read the program from top to bottom. But read the execution flow execution sequence is jumping from fourth line to the uh, second line now uh, this is not a linear layout but it is the flow of execution so always try to understand the flow of execution because that will help you to write better programs and uh, at certain times even help you to debug an erroneous program so uh, this was the basic idea that how a program is being uh, organized in the memory layout and how a function that is being stored in a memory uh, layout in a memory or your primary memory gets executed so i hope it made sense so do stay tuned to the channel hit that like button if you like this video and see you in the next one